All right, so this is a suggestion via donation. The name of the video is, uh, it begins, uh, New York City Migrant Crisis Eviction. Uh, this is coming from the channel uh, U.S. Immigration. Let's check it out. Our mayor is a slumlord. City council members and immigration oh. advocates blasting Mayor Eric Adams and his administration for implementing a policy that evicts migrant families with children. We're still getting thousands of migrants and asylums who are coming here. And so we want to give clear messages on what's expected. The overwhelming number of people who are there, they want to take the next step in the American dream. But you do have a numerical minority that we want to give clarity to that you can't come into our systems and be disruptive and in the neighborhoods. More than 80 percent of New York say that the recent migrant hey listen that right there is fair uh, and, you know obviously these are the uh the, the gangs of individuals coming um from the aragua uh, neighborhood guys yeah we don't want you bro please don't come here all right <laughs> please don't come and commit crime uh please i beg you right and be disruptive and in their neighborhoods that's fair. more than 80 percent of new yorkers say that the recent migrant influx is a serious problem when migrants first came to sanctuary cities, Democrats rolled out the red carpet. They pitched them wedding tents, filled them with recliners, popcorn machines, Xboxes. Xboxes. Leaders of sanctuary cities campaigned on the issue and boasted about all the illegals they'd let in. Protect our immigrants during the COVID, our immigrant stay. They provided a service for the city, and I believe we need to continue to make all sure right. this is a sanctuary city. But house guests can only stay Ooh. for so long before getting on your nerves. Right. The migrants are now causing trouble in the communities that were forced to take them in. Dozens of migrants refusing to leave this hotel in Midtown Manhattan. This Venezuelan man saying he's tired and cold, questioning if this is the harsh reality of the American dream. Yes, that, that is in fact the harsh reality of many people in the United States of America, referring, referring to exclusively to the people that were born here, right? That is the reality. There are homeless in these cities, uh, but miraculously, you were given access to a hotel. These people have to live on the street. In New York City, where officials tell us resources are overwhelmed. And you're complaining. Across public hospitals in New York City, over the last year, nearly 30,000 visits by migrants and 300 new babies born to migrant moms. Staff here at Bellevue Hospital tell us they're eager to help, but the numbers are tough. This has been the hardest work that I've ever done, but it's been the most impactful work that I've ever done. And most of the visits to the taxpayer-funded legal clinic here are by migrants. Our clinics are full, and there are waiting lists, and people are turning people away or referring them to other places. Randy Redkin from New York's Legal Assistance Group says so many migrants are asking for legal help on asylum representation and health care access. Now, she says, American citizens who need legal assistance with issues like eviction and insurance have to wait up to 10 weeks. If you ask me, do we need more resources for legal services? I would say absolutely yes. Parents in Brooklyn outrage. Yeah, I mean, bro, when you dump that gigantic population of people uh, on a city that's already pr pretty much filled to the brim, um, where they already had wait lists for Americans that were going in, yeah, bro, we're going to need a lot more now, most likely. Aged after the Where's that money going to come from, though? The city decided to use their kids' school to house migrants who had to be evacuated from the Floyd Bennett Field. What happened last night at Madison High School is a perfect example of what not to do. These kids and their families were punished for the failure of Joe Biden to secure our border. It is unacceptable that our schools have to accept migrants and cancel school for students who are supposed to go to school and yeah, learn that's... every single day. That's crazy. Look, I think this is on the mayor's administration. I think that they've opened up the door and the, and really rolled out the red carpet for illegal immigration here when they said we're welcoming all immigrants and we do welcome immigrants but you have to do that legally and now that they've done this they have to come up with a plan that doesn't affect our local students our families our residents our constituents new yorkers this is not sustainable it's unacceptable we're about to spend 12 billion dollars on this crisis so because of the cold weather there's been a lot of attention on bro that that's that's a b with a that's a billion. Not, not, yeah, that's crazy. Imagine what that amount of money can actually do for, uh, um, like, New Yorkers. Migrant families were being evicted Seriously. from local shelters after 60 days. 
Exactly, Stephen Teresa. As everyone knows, it has been freezing out here, and this new policy that evicts migrant families with children after 60 days has been in place for almost two weeks. Now, behind me, you can see the Roosevelt Hotel. This has been serving as a welcome center for newly arriving migrants, and now the reticketing center for migrant families with eviction notices. Our mayor is a slumlord. City council members and immigration advocates blasting Mayor Eric Adams and his administration for implementing a policy that evicts migrant families with children after 60 days. If these families cannot find their own housing within that time, they have to return to the Roosevelt Hotel and reapply for shelter. While a similar policy for single adult migrants has been in place for several months, this new recent policy change that now impacts migrant families with children has many, including the city council speaker, pushing back against the mayor. I urge the mayor to abandon this counterproductive and cruel, cruel tactic. Bro, there are more people than there are spaces in the areas where you can actually house the migrants, right? There, there are more people than that. There has to be some type of re revolving door um, unless they start building structures exclusively uh, for migrants, which will then again anger the actual local population of the city. Uh, there is no no win win in this situation. We're just currently being bombarded. There's nothing. There's no way to win this, guys. Um, so the only way to do it democratically is to give people a set amount of time and say, listen, once this time is up, you have to go. We got to bring more people in. Right? Um, but all right, let's go. And instead, pursue more sound management. Last week, the administration amended Bro. this policy so that pregnant migrants in their third trimester and women with newborn babies will not receive eviction notices until their babies turn six months old. In response to the rally, the Adams administration said, so then you just basically said, you just basically told the people to get pregnant. Says they've had to make these drastic policy decisions because they are out of room and resources to care for such Obviously. a large number of migrants, calling again for a federal solution. More than 170,000 migrants have received care since the spring of 2022, and 68,000 migrants are currently being housed by the city. Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala disagreed with the mayor that the city is out of room. I've been in meetings where I have been uh, told directly that one of the motives for this policy is really to make people uncomfortable enough. So I don't believe that the mayor is being honest. Advocates also say that moving kids around. To okay, listen. You're helping them? Great. Sure. Why not? Right? You're a sanctuary city. You said that. That's on your, your, uh, <laughs> that's on your letterhead. Do your thing. Right? I guess if that's what you wanted. Um the problem here is, is that you can't make people too comfortable. Um, this is why I've kind of always been against the concept of consistent and constant government assistance, like never getting off of it. You're, you're making people too comfortable. They can't be comfortable, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. You need that, that struggle that you go through is what makes you generally a, a much better and stronger person, um, you're able to actually survive in this hellish landscape. To different shelters disrupts their education with some kids being forced to bounce around to different schools. They have not been getting all the help this administration claims they've been giving them. These human beings are being moved from shelter to shelter. Shelter staff have lost their mail and say okay. that since they moved, they had to return their mail to sender. These are life changing documents. Now, according to a recent Siena College poll, Bro, what else do you want? ...that came out this morning, more than 80% of New Yorkers say that the recent migrant influx is a serious problem. What they're doing is uh, they're ringing doorbells. They rang my doorbell, and um, my girlfriend answered, and they stuck a government-paid uh, phone, telephone right in the face. They were already pre-programmed uh, in English, and it said, uh, can I have some money? And no. she turned them away. There was two little children with them. They're going door to door. They went into Marine Park during the Christmas holidays at night. Uh, and the neighbors were concerned. They were scared. They were coming in through the side doors, ringing doorbells, asking for food, asking for money. Uh, Bro, what? Just this week, they stole one woman's laundry in front of her house. Um, they're getting free Metro cards, so they take the bus into King's Plaza to the shopping center. And they're, they're robbing stores inside there. They're panhandling in the middle of the street. Uh, it's madness. I mean, we feel bad for anybody it that can't like it. 
put food on the table when they have young kids or can't wear right. a warm coat in the wintertime, but I mean, this is enough. I mean, we have enough panhandlers as it is that are American citizens. Too many panhandlers in Manhattan, bro. Too many, All right? And that, that's a testament to the amount of homelessness that's actually in Manhattan. It's a testament of that, right? So the person that was outside of the hotel complaining that he, I don't know, at least had a couple of months of warmth, let's say, inside of the Roosevelt Hotel and free food along with a free Metro card. Bro, how are you complaining right now? How? How? What did you expect when you came here, bro? Red carpets, I'm guessing, yes? We have enough thieves as it is. I mean, they're obviously, this city is full. It's full. Yeah. And yeah. There's no jobs? I thought they were coming here to work. There's no jobs here? No. No, no there's not nothing really. available. There's 1,700 migrants in the Floyd Bennett Fields with nothing to do. They're freezing to death in there. Uh, they have to leave their bunker area in order to uh, wash up and, and, and take care of their needs. The children are not being schooled. It's a horrifying situation. It's only going to get worse. Mm, are Absolutely. you giving them any money or what do you think? Does that just encourage more uh, panhandling? I'm, 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 Yes, it does. No, it, it doesn't make a difference. They're, they're, uh, they're not going to stop. They're, uh, they're very incessant with what they're doing. Um, and uh, it, I, I don't see an end to this situation. I don't. Maybe Do you blame Mayor Eric Adams? Because, I mean, he's just handling the wave that Biden let in. He, he is. Uh, he's asked the federal government for help. And it's funny that uh, he went to <laughs> a Democratic mayor who went to a Democratic president 10 times and was shown the door 10 times. <laughs> That's crazy. Our so here's the thing. Now, do I blame the mayor of New York specifically? No. Do I blame the mayor of Chicago, for example? Specifically? No. Uh, here's the problem. I blame the system that was actually in place before either of these individuals actually took office. Um, so obviously, you know, they're they're campaigning on the concept of a sanctuary city because the cities, both of these cities have been sanctuary cities for until right for extremely long. So, no, I don't blame them specifically for this. It's, in fact, the uh, the current administration that is allowing uh, these individuals into the nation. Guys, that's a fact here. OK, that's an absolute fact. Um, do I blame them? I think that it could be handled better. Let's say, right? Because if they ran on these things and won, then that's what the people in the area wanted at the time. Uh, was it misguided? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely misguided. Uh, but I don't blame this specifically these two uh, mayors, but I do fault them uh, on how they're handling it. Absolutely. Uh, the fact that you're closing schools for New Yorkers and people in Chicago uh, to fill these schools with migrants, and now the kids... And the parents that literally pay taxes in this area um, for the school, guys, keep this in mind here, for the school, they, these kids now cannot get an education because of what? Policy? Come on, bro. Give my tax dollars back. Give them back right now. <laughs> right? Um, but all right, listen, you guys let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, and you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.